Hi, I'm Amy Pennington. This week on Check, Please, Northwest, where you take us out to your favorite restaurants. If you think food should be a journey, head over to West Seattle. We cleared that plate. We finished that one. And if adventure with the view is for you, hike over to Ballard. The fish was cooked perfectly. But if soup and a sandwich is what you're craving, downtown is the place to go. The food is fantastic. You can taste it all. Next on Check, Please, Northwest. Check, Please is made possible by Sky City Restaurant atop the Space Needle, where people have been turning special moments into memories for over 50 years. The people at Sky City encourage you to get out and explore all the fresh ideas and tastes our amazing region has to offer. You know what you're going to get when you go there. A gigantic. I have more room for more. <laughs> I'm Amy Pennington, and welcome to Check, Please, Northwest, the show where diners from all over the area recommend and review their favorite restaurants. So here's how it works. Every week we have three guests. Each recommends his or her favorite spot, and the other two visit and dine there to see what they think. This week, digital media manager Madeline Moy has chosen a spot in West Seattle whose ever-changing dishes demand a chalkboard for a menu. But Quality Assurance Manager Mike Sindona says we should trust his experience, and he will show us how to eat well for less at his favorite cafeteria-style luncheon spot. And up first, radio host and event planner Jamie Piha is taking us to a spot that started as a coffee shop in 1945, evolved into a fish and chips bar in the 60s, and is now a Seattle icon. Stroll along the beach and wait on up to Ray's Boathouse. When I think of Ray's Boathouse, I think fun, exciting, fresh. Whenever I think about food, I think about layers of flavor. So I want you to be able to eat that halibut, but I also want you to be able to go, I don't know what that flavor is, but this is really cool. We have this kasu, the black pod, that was just blow your shoes off. I'm telling you, this thing is just so good, so sweet. And I think that is one of the things that put us on the map, keeps us on the map, and we'll continue to evolve with that. Generally, the boathouse is more, a little bit more of a sophistication, where people do want to celebrate and do things of that nature. We're upstairs. It's everybody's party. It's a great time. I want them to feel like, wow, this is beautiful. I finally made it. I've arrived. So Jamie, you chose Ray's Boathouse. Tell us why it's your favorite. The food is fantastic, but it is an amazing view. You're sitting there looking over the, the bay and it's just beautiful and uh, it's just a quintessential Seattle place. I think it's a great place for tourists as well um, when they come here to get a really great experience there. And what did you have on your recent visit? I had uh, started with fresh oysters on the half shell and then ordered the uh, Chatham Straits um, sable fish, sake kasu. Uh, so it's marinated in the leaves of the sake and it's just wonderful and sweet and caramelized and delicious. Whenever I go there, I always order one Alaskan king crab leg to top off my dish. It was delicious. Now, Madeline, you had oysters as well when you visited, right? I did and they were fabulous. I had three different kinds and I wish I had known about the Alaskan oh, king see, crab. I think thing. it's a secret. I don't know. I'm going to do that the next king. time I go. Yes. There. I also had the Dungeness crab salad, which was uh, really surprising. Um, it had coconut flakes in it. It was uh, kind of Asian inspired and not something that I expected to have at uh, Ray's Boathouse. And it was very refreshing and a great salad to have. Any other standouts? The dessert. Oh. <laughs> amazing uh, quadruple chocolate mousse and two of my favorite uh, flavors because it came with a, an orange caramel sauce and the chocolate and the orange together. Uh, so good. What did you have, Mike? We had the uh, mussels and the crab cake uh, and we dipped bread into the red curry mm -hmm. sauce, which was awesome. And we got really full really fast and I was like, we ordered entrees too. So I was like, slow down, <laughs> slow down. I had the halibut, which was the special. And both pieces of fish were like the size of a shoe. It was, wow. I, I was already like, I, I was already full. It came out and I was like, I cannot believe 
this much fish. It was it was amazing. This when the Saki Kasu sablefish came out, it looked like it should be on the cover of a magazine. It was so yeah. pretty and it was such a big piece of fish. It was yeah. just oh, gorgeous. And after that, you know, I, we had to try dessert. And when my girlfriend watches the show and hears how much you like the mousse, she's gonna kill me for not ordering it. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I can't do chocolate right now. I have way, way too much food in my belly. So instead, we went with the cheesecake, which I think was probably the mistake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's much, yeah, that's yeah, much lighter. Much lighter. Uh, said tiramisu. I'm half Italian. I'm like, tiramisu. I gotta try tiramisu. So. And the kids' menu at Ray's Boathouse is amazing. We actually ordered for the kids uh, these huge bowls of steamed clams and this dill butter sauce and the kids just gobble them up. And, great for dipping bread. Yeah, it's great for dipping <laughs> bread. I mean, and it was so um, it was so big that we were able to share amongst the table and uh, it was a really good deal. Talk to me about the look and feel of Ray's Mike because you there's an upstairs and there's a downstairs portion. So where did you dine? Well, the way I was dressed, I should have went to the upstairs because I, <laughs> I, I showed up after hockey. I, I showered, but uh, but I was wearing jeans and a t-shirt. And like I'm thinking, you know, I didn't know it was going to be as nice as it was. I see Ray's Boathouse. I'm like, oh, it's like you know, it's a salty bar. I'm going to order some oysters and a beer. And we get there and there's like valley parking. I was like, oh no, they were still cool. They weren't you know, like, oh no, don't worry about it. I said, is there a dress code here? I said, no, we'll see you anyway. But I definitely was underdressed. Visually, walk me through. The Room, Jamie. You walk into Ray's and what do you see? A lot of wood everywhere, so it's a very warm feeling. Um, you can go upstairs. We go upstairs is the cafe and the outdoor, you know, deck overlooking the water, which is a great place to go for cocktails when it's warm outside. And then you walk into the dining room and it's like, you know, glass windows all the way along. So it's a, it's you get a span of a view. I mean, it's it's long and beautiful. Every seat's great. Every, Every seat is great. Yeah, that's what's nice. I think we saw someone on a first date. Uh, there. <laughs> it is nice that um, they can accommodate groups. What about um, beverages? We, we had a couple of the uh, mixed drinks. It was a pineapple mojito, which was mm. awesome. Uh, I really liked it a lot, but my girlfriend ordered that one. She didn't quite like it. It was, it was too much for her, and I ordered um, like it was a Marion Berry Cosmo or something. And I, mm. I, I, I had a special how, request. How yeah. Well, I know. I had, a, I had a special request. I said, please don't put it in one of those fancy glasses. Can you like, put it in like a normal glass? Anyone else? We had wine. I asked a question about one of the rosés, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll try this one. And and the waitress came out to the table um, with the bottle in her hand and said, you know, why don't you taste a little bit first and see if you like it? And I thought that was a lovely touch. Whenever you order a glass of wine, they bring the bottle to the table and pour it so you can see the label. And I thought that was a lovely, a lovely element of service. Our server was really friendly and personable. And then um, she was gone for a really long time. So, you know, we ran out of bread. We probably would have ordered more food if she had come back. So it was kind of a loss to the restaurant. For the price that you're paying, I expected a lot better service. Our service was great. She was on the ball and checked up on us and got everything right and made some great recommendations. So, um, you know, definitely bang for the buck was great. And how about you, Jamie? We were there at five o'clock. So there weren't, it wasn't, there weren't a lot of people there yet. Um, so we got a lot of attention, which was, you know, really nice. And, um, yeah, we, I just felt like it was it was fine all the way through. Very, very accommodating. All right, Jamie, well, you picked Ray's Boathouse as your favorite spot. Sum it up for us. It is quality seafood and fish. You know what you're going to get when you go there. An incredible view and a Seattle icon. Good for people who live here and for tourists. Mike? Excellent all around. It's, uh, you know, once again, great, great seafood, great fish. Uh, everything on the menu looked delicious. I wish I could have ordered more and had more room for more. <laughs> and Madeline? Good place to celebrate a special occasion or take out-of-town guests. All right, well, you can take your out-of-town guests to try this fresh seafood for yourself at Ray's Boathouse, 6049 Seaview Avenue Northwest in Seattle, 206-789-3770. Open nightly for dinner and reservations are accepted. Next up, Quality Assurance Manager Mike Sindona says he found a spot where you won't find waiters or tablecloths, but you will find a great lunch at a great price. We're talking about Bakemans. We basically just a home cooking soup and sandwich. I create six kind of homemade soup every day, make a homemade meatloaf, and then basically all the other roast beef, corned beef, and stuff like that. We roast fresh turkey. We have the best turkey sandwich in Seattle. In the old days, we like to people come in and order the sandwich, you know, and not asking way too many questions. 
So if you were to say, I want a white on dark with mayonnaise and cranberry, it'll get done by the time you finish your sentence. Whereas if you don't know how to order, that changes everything. I used to kid around, you get two questions, you know. <laughs> Meatball to go, Italian. Did you want a piece of pie also, sir? Where's your drink or dessert, sir? Only $875. No. When we get busy, it seems to be a lot of fun because everybody see each other, they know each other. I've been around for a long, long time. Been here for 42 years. I'm proud of the soup and sandwich we make and uh, the daily special because it's very home cooked type of thing, and people like it. So, Mike, you chose Bakeman's. Tell us why it's your pick. Um, I uh, started working in the Pioneer Square area district uh, like over a year ago, and I walked past there quite a few times and looked in, and I was like, that doesn't look right. I, I thought maybe it was like, a, I thought <laughs> there's a lot of missions in the area, and, like helping out the people in, around Pioneer Square, and I thought like, I don't know, I'm going to keep going. And uh, one day after going to the bank, I saw a bunch of guys in suits going into Bakeman's. I was like, all right, I'll try it out. You know, it's, it's a place you can go, you spend around five bucks, you get like a home made lunch and uh it's like the day after thanksgiving every day there you know so you can get i get great turkey sandwiches they make like two or three specials every day at menu always, ro always rotates so they have four new soups every day so e even if i go there two or three nights a week or two or three days a week for lunch it still ends up being a different meal every time unless i want that turkey sandwich i love the place it's got you know it's it's a little gruff. It's, I'm a I'm New York, New Jersey, and so it feels like home there. You know, it's like, hey, order your food and get out of the way. You know, so um, first timers there can kind of, it's like deer in the headlights to some people. And it's actually fun. I actually like, I like sitting to be able to watch the line and wait for someone to like yell at one of the customers. So they go, what, did you just yell at me? It's like, yeah, get back in line. What are you ordering? Did you take it too long? Yeah, I, I love the banter between Jason and the customers. I think I think it's all act. I think Jason is actually a real sweetheart, but I, I love that he gives people a hard time. Because it's not something, Seattle's such a poli polite city that you don't, you don't really get a lot of that kind of character. Oh. Where's your cash? How much cash have you got? He got lots of cash. It, it caught me off guard at first <laughs> until I until I figured out that he was just you know kidding around and joking. And then it was really fun. And uh, I thought, what a great! I mean, I just felt totally at home after that. But I got to, the time I got to the end of the line, and, and you know he was like, "Hey, you're ordering too much food. What, you got a big appetite?" He's like <laughs> giving me a hard time. It was really fun. I did get on the internet and read a little bit about it before I went, and and then. Um, uh, you know, read that they're really well known for their turkey, so I thought I got, I got, I got to try the turkey, right? So, uh, but then I got in there and realized how many choices there were, and I thought, well, I can't just have turkey, so, so <laughs> I can have a half a sandwich of turkey and a half a sandwich of meatloaf, and you know, I, I tried a whole bunch of different things. Um, they piled the dark meat turkey on that sandwich. Did you but get it with the sauce? I did. Sauce. I mean, they ask you what condiments you want, and it is fresh turkey. I mean, it is like so good. Totally loved the place. Totally loved it. Yeah, I really like that they have uh, two or three daily specials, and that's what I got. Um, I had, uh, it was a salmon with rice pilaf and roasted vegetables, and um, the fish was cooked perfectly. You know, maybe not something you would expect for you know, a cafeteria-style place, um, but it was, it was really great. And so affordable. They do a special, which, you know, it's not on the menu, and uh, hopefully they don't get angry I'm telling people this, but... Uh, you are in so much trouble. I am, I am, because it's kind of a pain for them to make this, but it's awesome. So, you know, being an East Coast guy, I love diners, and the way I judge most diners is their bacon cheeseburger or their hot open turkey face sandwich. Oh. And I was like, you guys make turkey, you have bread, I see some gravy over there, you know, so I was like, uh, you mind yeah. kind of putting th something together and making a hot open turkey sandwich? And Jason said, as long as they have gravy, he'll do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's awesome. I'm, I tell him, like, put it on your menu as a yeah. daily item. It'll sell right. like crazy. And he's like, ah, whatever. <laughs> the secret is now out. Yes, That's it's right. out. Sorry. Yeah. So how does that line and seating work? Talk to me about that, Madeline. Um, you figure out what you better know what you want. You, everything, like when your turn yeah, comes up. When your turn comes up, and so you get it. When you get up there, you, they say, oh, you know, next. <laughs> Not even like, may I help you or whatever, <laughs> just next. And then you give your order, you get your tray or your bag if you're moving down. And then, you know, what about you? Do you want soup? And so it's very, it's very quick. But I never felt like they were ever being disrespectful mm -hmm. or um, impolite. I think they, they know that, especially in times like these, you know, they need to sell as many as many lunches as possible. Especially and four dollar sandwiches. Yeah. Have so you sat in the random weird bar, bar area? Yeah, no, I'd 
wondered it's, what that. I thought maybe it was connected to something else. I wasn't sure no, what that, that was. No, that is part of Bakeman's, but I can't figure out what that is because it's it, overflow. It's a, it's an old bar. Right. Yeah, it looks great. I felt like man, you should make this like a nice, real nice bar, right. and like it looks like a nice restaurant. It's all dark and mm -hmm. wood furniture, right. and they have a full old school bar back there, but they don't serve like. Mm -hmm. it's, well, it's they like do. Got I know they do stuff. catering. I saw that. And maybe they. I don't know, maybe it's a part of an event space or something. I don't know. Jamie, talk to me a little bit about the neighborhood where Bakeman's is. Well, it's right in the kind of the heart of Pioneer Square. So yeah, you're you're within walking distance from a lot of different parts of downtown, and uh, saw all kinds of different people enjoying the place. I mean, there were people in suits. Uh, you know, there were. Um, you know, uh, ladies meeting for lunch. I mean, there was just a variety of people enjoying uh, the place. So, I mean, I think it's it's kind of good for anybody. And what a great part of town to be in. It's, you know, active. All right, Mike, so you chose Bakeman's as your favorite restaurant. Sum it up for us. Really homey feel, uh, quick service, cheap lunch, in and out, easy. How about you, Madeline? A uh, great lunch place with terrific food at really great prices. A place I would go back to time and time again. Uh, I actually think it'd be a great place for a business lunch meeting because it really takes all the frills away and you're just kind of having this casual experience. Totally affordable, great, fresh, and fun. All right, well, you can try great, fresh, fun food for yourself at Bakeman's, 122 Cherry Street in Seattle, 206-622-3375, open Monday through Friday from 10 to 3 p.m. Reservations are not required. Up next, digital media manager Madeline Moy says her place has a menu that is always new and exciting. Follow her to West Seattle and stop in at Blackboard Bistro. I tell everyone the, the food here is what I feel like eating at the time. Sometimes you'll come in and it'll be really pasta, Italian heavy, and I think it's just because that's what I'm craving. Service, please. It's not what I would call comfort food, but it's one step away from it, I think. It's just simple, good food that you don't have to do much with. We get families, I do a kid's menu, and I have three children, so it's important to me to feel like anyone can come here. And I've worked at restaurants that you sold more off the specials board then you sold off your menu, so I guess it just came, why not make it all a specials board? I like the, the fluidity of it, the clean cut, erase it, you're done, move on. I feel like it's easy up here in, in the Northwest. You don't have to, to try too hard to find really good local products. Thank you. You're welcome. I try and Keep everything as simple as possible, get good stuff, good ingredients in season, and, and don't mess with it too much. So Madeline, tell us why you chose Blackboard Bistro as your favorite. Blackboard Bistro is a great neighborhood restaurant. It's very cozy and intimate, and it has this ever-changing menu that's really creative and always surprising. They do a twist on an old classic and you know, take it somewhere completely different. My family can just pop into Blackboard Bistro, and we know that we're going to have a great meal. What do you have when you go? This braised beef cheek. So it was like a play on steak frites. So it was like braised beef cheek and then um, these fries with truffle mayonnaise. Felt really decadent without being kind of overpowering and the beef was perfectly cooked, really tender, you know, just kind of fell apart with a fork and um, yeah, it was so good. You had that too, right? I did, it was excellent. So I brought my sister there, she's vegetarian, so I like to get her angle on things. We did four dishes and we did two as appetizers and we did two as our main course. The ciabatta bread they have oh, there, yeah. excellent. It so was excellent. <laughs> Crusty on the outside, soft on the inside. We had the asparagus with a fonte cheese and some sort of mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Awesome, the, the asparagus was cooked perfectly, like nice and crispy, but you know, tasty, and we finished that one. Next thing we ordered was the uh, gnocchi with the braised eggplant, mm -hmm. and it came with eight huge cloves of garlic in there, which look exactly like the gnocchi. 
So Whoa. you put your fork in it, and you're like, "Whoa, that's not gnocchi." You Good know? thing you were there with your sister. Right? Yeah, yeah. So they had these uh, lentils that she was want she wanted to try out, but it came with like a piece of pork on it. So um, she asked the. Uh, she asked the, the server, and he's like, well, we do have a lot of vegetarian options. And my sister's like, I don't care. I want the lentils. So <laughs> can you do something for me? And so the guy was totally accommodating, really cool. Went back, talked to the chef, and the chef said, here's what I'll do. I'll, he grilled this thing called a ramps, which oh, is like a like local uh -huh. onion leek looking thing. And he <laughs> grilled it and put it on his bed of... Uh, That's the perfect yeah. explanation. You're exactly You're right. You're probably growing yeah. those. Yeah. <laughs> so, and he put it on this bed of lentils and, and surrounded it in a, in a tomato almond sauce, Ooh, which uh, my sister... Delicious devoured it. And uh, for dessert, we had the profiteroles with uh, coconut ice cream. That ice cream. Oh, my goodness. So awesome. Good. Overall, excellent meal for the, for the price. Well, Jamie, it sounds like Mike ate everything off of the blackboard. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Did you have Sorry. anything that he didn't have? I have to say, after listening to you two, I feel like I totally ordered the wrong thing. <laughs> the menu, like you said, is really, it's, it's very diverse and different. I mean, a lot of interesting combinations of things I wouldn't normally think of. And it made it really hard for me to make up my mind. I ended up ordering the slow roasted pork shoulder with uh, basil, hazelnuts, and grilled green onions. Um, I wasn't really very happy with this dish. The greens on the plate were good. I loved the, you know, like the vinaigrette that was with that and the grilled onions. But I probably, you know, it just wasn't the right thing for me, and it was a little bit overcooked. My husband ordered the trout, which was a really large piece oh, of trout, yeah, um, and, and it was a little bit over overdone yeah. as well. The best thing at the table was the um, the boudin blanc, which is like a chicken sausage, uh, and that was very good. I, I kind of feel like maybe I, I hit it on an off night. I mean, like I would give it another chance, but. I didn't walk away from there feeling like, oh my gosh, you know, I, I totally love this. Jamie, talk to me about dessert. It was a maple creme brulee. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it, how was that? It was really delicious. What did you think about the atmosphere and the ambiance? Uh, the atmosphere and the ambiance was, was nice. It, you know, it's, it's, there's conversations going on. It feels like a comfortable place to be. And I like that a lot, right. that there's kind of this communal feeling. It's really friendly. Well, overall, it was, you know, the look was nice. It was a, it was a good looking place when you walked in. It was cool. And Madeline, how was your service experience this time? I love the service. Um, we, they're really attentive without being overbearing. Uh, they check up on you. They're really good because, because the menu is so eclectic. They're really good at explaining, but not in a pretentious way. How was your service experience, Jamie? The waitress was so friendly and so nice. And so, you know, again, I would give it another try. How about you, Mike? How was your service experience? Uh, we showed up at 7, and by 8 o'clock, the place was totally packed. Service was great. It was very accommodating to my sister's uh, requests. Madeline, talk to me about the neighborhood where Blackboard Bistro is. It's on California Avenue in West Seattle, which is a really cute part of town. There's lots of street parking. During the summer, if you wanted to take a walk either before or after, it'd be really nice. You know, there's trees lining the sidewalks and it's, it's really charming. Any notes on the wine list, Jamie? You know, I didn't have wine there, but I had, uh, I, I did have a cocktail. I had ordered sort of, you know, special drink that I like a certain way, and uh, they totally made it perfectly exactly how I ordered it, and it was absolutely delicious. I had two. <laughs> <laughs> that a girl. <laughs> All right, Madeline, so you chose Blackboard Bistro as your favorite. Sum it up for us. It's a cozy neighborhood restaurant with a really creative and interesting menu. Friendly, uh, you know, good looking kind of bistro with, uh, with a strange menu, but, but definitely, uh, you know, <laughs> good place to go date or, or bringing family there. Liked it a lot. I think it lives up to its name, Blackboard Bistro. I mean, definitely everything is written on the blackboard and you do get that sort of, you know, a neighborhood bistro feeling. All right, well, you can see what's fresh on the blackboard for yourself at Blackboard Bistro. 3247 California Avenue Southwest in West Seattle, 206-257-4832. Open Tuesday through Sunday for dinner and closed on Mondays. Reservations are accepted. So on this week's show, we featured Ray's Boathouse near Shilshul, Bakeman's in downtown Seattle, and Blackboard Bistro in West Seattle. Let's recap what our guests had to say. First, we visited Ray's Boathouse. Jamie says, expect quality seafood at a Seattle icon. Mike says, great seafood, great fish, and everything was just delicious. Madeline says, it's perfect for special occasions. Then we headed to Bakeman's Restaurant. 
Mike says he loves the homemade style lunch and it's an excellent value. Madeline says terrific food at a great price. And Jamie says totally affordable, fresh, and fun. Finally, we stopped in at Blackboard Bistro. Madeline says it's a cozy neighborhood restaurant. Mike says it's a friendly, good-looking bistro. And Jamie says she enjoyed the service. We have had a wonderful time this week. I want to thank my guests, Jamie Piha, Mike Sindona, and Madeline Moy. Join us next week for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check, Please. I'm Amy Pennington, and I will see you then. Cheers. Cheers. Good. Cheers. Thank you for coming in and sharing your excellent food. Visit kcts9.org slash check, please, for more information and apply to be a guest. Check, please, is made possible by Sky City Restaurant atop the Space Needle, where people have been turning special moments into memories for over 50 years. The people at Sky City encourage you to get out and explore all the fresh ideas and tastes our amazing region has to offer.